D.L. Hughley is back once again. He's crushing it. Yeah, he's talking about George Santos in this latest from the GED section. And, you know, he really hit on something that I don't think was talked about clearly enough. Certainly, he's approaching this from an angle I hadn't even thought about in all this, what do they say, all this Michigas. This craziness around his various lies. Which is that the people of New York didn't really elect him, did they? They elected the, uh, the collection of lies he said were who he was. But that's not George Santos, as we've learned. Let's go to the man himself. Here's uh, D.L. Hughley. I'll pull this way down. Well, the uh, video starts up. Oh, DL, there we go. Um, that, of course, was uh, uh, Sunshine Anderson. Heard it all before, haven't we? So, side note. Oh, it's playing on my uh, a past life. Oh, I do love the uh, the radio intro. George Santos is a newly elected congressman uh, from Long Island. He is in battle, and he's in battle by many in his, of his own party, particularly his constituents in uh, Long Island. Because George Santos lied virtually about everything. Where he went to school, how much money he made, where his parents died, what team he played for. So virtually nothing uh, about him is true. Nothing. And of course, uh, the Republicans now have a slim majority. They hold on to the House. And I believe that is their major consideration. Kevin McCarthy, Leader McCarthy said, well, he was duly elected, uh, you know, by... Uh, the uh, people of his, uh, by his constituents. He was not. The, the guy they elected Bam. is not the guy that showed up. He showed, his representative showed up. He lied virtually about every single thing. Now, let's be clear. Politicians lie about things all the time. And there are lies that, that we have learned to deal with it, but, uh, as the American people. We are comfortable or we are used to uh, uh, politicians lying. But to the degree that he lied, it is so egregious that many in his own party are saying this is too much. A party that has lived with lying for a very long time. They had a president who they still actively support who lies on the regular. They used to keep a running tab, uh, a tab on how much he lied. So one note that it's not the point uh, Mr. Hughley's making here, but um, it got me thinking. It's a long shot. But do you reckon that George Santos is the man's legal name? What did he what did he swear in under? Did he even take the oath under a name that is his is he Anthony DeVolder or is he George Santos? What's what's on his what's on his tax forms? I'm gonna try to look into that. I'm not so sure that I'll be able to come up with an answer. If you want to sick someone on it that is very likely to be able to come up with an answer, put a link for ABC7 New York in the description. Contact him. Tell, just tell that station. At their, at their, they'll have an email address uh, available somewhere on their site in the contact section, usually if you scroll to the very bottom of their uh, talent page. But, uh, yeah, uh, a FOIA ought to get that. And if he, if his name genuinely is George Santos, okay, glad he, glad he got that changed, I guess, before, uh, before he was, uh, sworn in. If it isn't, very interesting. I wonder what implications that could have. But let's go to the larger point D.L. Hughley is making, which is that, uh, the man that was elected was a non-existent person. It was all lies, Santos told. Can you really say that George Santos got elected? It is not fair to burden the constituents of that uh, district by saying that they voted for him when he was not. That's like you getting, getting um, meeting somebody and everything about them is a lie. Everything about them is like, sure. if you lied on the application to that degree and got the job, they would fire you. Why does he get to be a representative of the people? 
He lied about True. everything. Lying we about every single aspect of your personal life is not how you get elected. It's how you catfish. He could be on MTV. He doesn't need to be in the halls of governance. And what committee can you sit such a one liar in? And the problem is that he is perfectly comfortable in a party that is used to lying and, and conspiracy. They're used to it. The actual committees are escaping me right now, but he got sat on two committees and neither of them were minor. Two significant committees. It, it makes me real uncomfortable that a guy that appears, well, has been confirmed to have taken Russian money in, the, in what, a $23,000 donation and mysteriously got $700,000 out of nowhere. He's making decisions for America. He literally owes the Russians his candidacy, and he's making decisions for America. Matter of fact, it may be a prerequisite. You got people now who are sitting on committees that are about the safety of the United States of America who willfully try to overthrow America. There are 30 to 50 congressmen right now and a few senators right now who are going to be, Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to be on the committee. Crazy. She actively tried to overthrow the government. And the interesting thing that Leader McCarthy said, well, he was elected and he'll go through the, the uh, ethics process. What ethics exist there? You supported a man who tried, who tried to overthrow the government. You keep people in, uh, in positions of power and, and key chair committees who have been uh, right, consorted with white supremacists and white nationalists. You put a woman on the, on the, uh, on, uh, intelligence team that tried to overthrow the government what ethics to have an ethic, uh, ethics party you have to have ethics you have to decide oh, that yeah. there's some things you won't tolerate and apparently there aren't george santos is not who the people of that district represented they're yes. not the people they, he's not the person that they voted for he's the made-up guy they voted for but i guess in this republican party that will do all you got to do is show up and vote and vote the way they want you to. They will accept anything. Absolutely nailing it. D.L. Hughley, welcome to the no notes section. Uh, it's it exactly. If there is anything good about Santos, Trump, Green, Gates... They have laid bare what was always true about the Republican Party. And if you yourself used to be a Republican and you dropped out after 2016 because you couldn't handle the craziness, first of all, congratulations on being able to think critically and change your mind. Second, and it's going to be hard to hear, all of these people are only doing a sloppier version of what Republicans have been doing since Newt Gingrich's heyday in the early 90s. Remember the Clinton impeachment? Did that make sense to you in the context of American impeachments of presidents up until that time? Truly? I have all kinds of beef with Bill Clinton. Uh, I do not like neoliberal policy as a rule. But the Clinton impeachment was ridiculous. It was a show trial. It was a political stunt. That has been all Republicans are. They're a way for the rich to steal from America by distracting with culture war nonsense. The war on Christmas, pushed by Fox News, specifically a propaganda channel set up by Roger Ailes. He's on the record talking about it. It's designed to be that. That predates Trump. That predates all of this. If America survives, the Republican Party will not. I would like you, the audience, to just make a note now of where we are, where we're going, and what is likely to happen. Where we are, Republican politics laid bare. I dare say right-wing politics laid bare. Where are we going? We are either not going to have a Republican Party, 
or we're not going to have a democracy. Because the Republican Party has demonstrated that it's fine not operating on democratic principles, ignoring the popular vote, ignoring the winner of elections, claiming all elections that they don't win are rigged. They've demonstrated that. What are we going to be? Well, assuming we survive the demise of the Republican Party, watch the Democrats real close. They are already much more comfortable advocating for conservative policy than they are for progressive policy. I think we are perhaps on the verge. I'll, I'll go further. I think we are likely on the verge of seeing the end of uh, the end of Republicans as a party altogether, and the birth of the new right wing, which would be the Democrats. We have Joe Manchin voting against the filibuster. Under the guise of being a Democrat, we had Kristen Sinema voting against the minimum wage increase. This is a party that is comfortable hosting conservatives, which means get ready for them to be the new conservatives, to fill that void. I don't think a, uh, I don't think MAGA is going to give up the fight before they've ruined the party's reputation entirely. We who are interested in actually bettering America should make an effort to prepare for that day now. Make a note of who the voting blocks are that vote for minimum wage increases, that vote for Medicare for all, that vote for getting big money out of politics. Pay attention to those folks because they're going to be the new left wing. And we'll probably have to find a different name. 